Good evening, everyone. My name's Heath Haskins, Code Primate, and this is Lumber Tycoon 2. Um, so, happy Veterans Day to everyone. Uh, there is a call for, like, celebration and for remembrance and uh, a basic... It, it, it's a holiday. It is a national holiday. And a lot of schools get out and a lot of um, people celebrate it and they take time to recognize service members. Um, any... Any military service member who served in any branch for any amount of time. And uh, that goes for anyone, um, whether you made it out of boot camp or whether you did 32 years. This this video, this is my celebration to you. Um, I was in the military, in the Marine Corps, and basically I, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to build um, a thing here. I actually looked it up, and uh, the the thing that I'm going to build is called the Eight Bit Heart American Flag Stickers by Pork and Beans. It's over on Redbubble. So Pork and Beans, thank you so much for this. I do have to modify it. We don't have black wood, so I'm not going to be able to um, put the border around it. But the darkest wood that I have is um, right here, spook wood. So I'm going to make this just to um, recognize and to celebrate. Uh, Veterans Day and tell you stories of like whenever I was in the Marine Corps um, so I was sitting at my house one two three four five six um, not really doing anything I graduated from um, from high school and Is that right? Hold on. I, I keep having to reference this thing, so. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. I think. One, two, three, four, five, six. So then the next one's actually a double. And then the one after that is going to be one, two, three, four, four up. One, two, three. Four, like that. Um, looks like it's going to be a little tall. That's okay. Um, anyhow, where, where was I? <laughs> Sorry, I get lost a lot whenever I'm telling stories. How many is that? One, two, three. It's three. Three across. Um, one, two, three. So I had graduated from high school, didn't really have any plans for college, and my buddy um, had come over and was going to the recruiting uh, recruiter's office to sign some last minute paperwork. And he said, hey, do you wanna go over there with me? And I gotta I got sign some papers, and then afterwards we'll go and do something. I was like, all right, cool, I'll, I'll do that. Um, needless to say, Got in there and started talking to the recruiter, and those guys were really good at their job. But he told me how the military could benefit me, and I could get a college degree, and I could basically pick whatever job I wanted. Just had to take a little test, you know? And uh, he asked me what I wanted out of the military. And uh, I said an education, because I had messed around in high school and, and didn't really have like the best of grades, but I did good, and when he showed me my options, I found out that I could become a computer programmer. So I was like, sweet, I'm gonna go be a programmer. Um, well, that field, the it was called G4, I think, that field actually got closed um, before I could do anything. But I went in on a Tuesday, I signed up, uh, to actually go to the Marine Corps on a Wednesday. I went to this thing called MEPS, which is like your, your pre-check-in stuff on Thursday. And then I shipped out the next week. I was probably one of the easiest recruits he had ever gotten to sign up for, um, for the Marine Corps. So, <sighs> Needless to say, 
uh, I came home after talking with the recruiter, recruiter that day, and I told my mom that I was going to the military. And she's like, no, you're not. <laughs> I'm like, uh, kind of not your choice. I'm 18. And she's like, no, you're not going to the Marine Corps. And then she told me, okay, you're going you're gonna to wait a couple days and think about it. I couldn't. I was so excited after talking with the recruiter and talking about everything, all my options that I could do. And sure enough, I shipped out to boot camp. I actually went in uh, with the guy that, that went up to sign his last minute paperwork. And he told me uh, that we were going to go through what's called the buddy program, which basically is you can sign up with a friend to go to the Marine Corps and you go through basic boot camp together. Um, he signed up to be an 0300, 0311. Sorry, I'm I'm not uppity up on my uh, MOS um, numbers like I used to be. Anyhow, he was gonna go be a grunt, which is uh, an abbreviation for ground. Was it uh, grunt? Ground reserve untrained I don't know anyhow that's the abbreviation of grunt <sighs> um, let's see I went out to MCRD San Diego which is Marine Corps recruit depot out in California uh, when I went out there there's a place inside the airport where you're supposed to sit and wait for them to come get you on the bus um, well, me and four or five of the other guys that had our orders, uh, we had gotten delayed on our flight, so we ended up getting there really late. So there was a, a secondary bus that actually came to get us, um, but I remember sitting on the flight, and then as we landed in MCRD, San Diego, they, uh, or as we landed at the, the airport, it's not that far away, I remember the captain coming over the intercom and saying uh, to the recruits that are about to go into the Marine Corps blah, 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 we salute you and it was the uh, it was the coolest feeling because uh, he asked that everybody else remain seated while we got up to uh, walk out because he knew that we had to get to the, uh, the depot and everyone there were <laughs> There were a couple of people that stood and uh, stood at attention. I didn't know what they were doing at the time because, I mean, I hadn't been to boot camp yet. And the entire plane was, like, clapping and cheering as we walked off the, uh, into the terminal. So it was really cool. And we we weren't even recruits yet. We weren't in boot camp. Nothing. So anyhow, we got to the little staging waiting area, and I remember... Uh, when that first in, induction uh, marine, the, the drill instructor, he actually had us line up on uh, the outside as we waited for the bus to come pick us up. And he kept saying, closer, closer, closer. And I mean, we were, we were like right on top of each other. We couldn't have gotten any, any closer if we had tried. So uh, when we arrived at MCRD San Diego. The first drill instructor came on the bus and he just started screaming and he, everything out of his mouth. Like all of his instructions were perfectly clear. We knew exactly what we were supposed to do. We had to grab all of our junk, get off the bus as fast as possible, stand on some yellow footprints and then stand at attention uh, looking straight ahead. And the first commands that we were instructed was whenever we, I say something to you, it's not sir, yes, sir. It is yes, sir. No, sir. I, I, sir. That's it. So, sorry. It's cold out here, so I'm kind of nasally. The next 48 hours were a blur because you didn't get a chance to sleep. You didn't get a chance to, uh, to rest at all. It was constant induction into the Marine Corps. It was fast. Um, I remember drill instructors yelling all the time, instructions to go here, do this, do that, do the other. You didn't get to think for yourself. Um, uh, they also made you speak in third person. So the use of I, me, we, us 
that became a thing of the past. Um, we re had to refer to ourselves as this recruit, that recruit. We were now recruits inside the Marine Corps. Um, I do remember him having us look at the drill instructor's pledge, and he read off the entire thing verbatim. It was very fast, but exactly what it was for the drill instructors were going to do. After that, we got in and we got our heads shaved, and then uh, they took our measurements like so fast. We got boots, we got uh, uniforms. Uh, they took all of our stuff, everything that we had on us, and threw it into a box and slapped a, a number on it with our, our name. There was so much paperwork to fill out. Like, I don't like paperwork. I'd never liked paperwork before, but after boot camp, oh, no, never, none. Anyhow, since then, um, it was learning all the instructions for, like, uh, lining up, for listening, for looking, and it was basically becoming a robot. And then, that lasted for a really long time. And then T32, I, I think it's T32, training day 32 is basically the test of Marine Corps knowledge in the little green mini, the, uh the knowledge book of Marine Corps. Uh, you had to read this little green handbook that had everything from the Marine Corps history to uh, how to change out an M16, how to break it down, uh, to survival techniques uh, inside the jungle. I mean, it was basically like a survival book. And it taught you um, combat tricks. It taught you traps. It taught you so much knowledge, but it was all book knowledge. So everything that you did um, then was to learn a discipline. It was to break you down from wherever you came from, because we, we were from all over the place. I mean, every state. Anyhow, um, 3094. That was my squad, squad, not squad, unit number, uh, troop number, troop 3094, Lima Company. That was, uh, yeah. Anyhow, you had a guide. He was like the one in charge of the squad leaders. And then you had four squad leaders who were in charge of their squads. And then the rest of the troop was broken up into squads. Um, I won't go into too much detail. If you ever want to know what the uh, actuality of... Marine Corps boot camp is like. Um, there's a lovely video. It's not family friendly, by the way, and I don't recommend it for any children. Um, but if you're interested in the Marine Corps, um, the first part of Full Metal Jacket. That is, <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, I won't. Like I said, I won't go into details. It's not family friendly. But the boot camp portion of that is. Right in line with the screaming and the yelling and everything else. Of course, that's also back during a time when the drill instructors would physically punch and kick and do all kinds of other stuff. Um, thankfully, I never got punched while I was uh, there. I kind of kept my head down. Having having ADHD um, is actually a disqualifier. So... I didn't tell them that I had ADHD and uh, I had stopped taking my medication so I could uh, get into the Marine Corps. And I, I loved the running. I loved the, the military, like the boot camp portion of it. I didn't like the garrison side, the, the paperwork, the, the hierarchy, stuff like that. I didn't like that somebody younger than me could have a higher rank and could tell me what to do. I'm like, really? I've been here so long and here's this person coming in saying that they know more than I do? Okay. Anyhow. I'll leave it at that. Um, a lot of people ask me where I was when 9-11 happened. So, uh, by the time I got out of boot camp, I got to come home for 10 days uh, for 
boot leave. And by that time, I had done three months of pure exercise. You run everywhere. You don't walk as a, a recruit. And if, you, if you're walking, it better be in a formation and somebody's calling marching steps. So that's the left, right, low, right. That's, yeah. <laughs> so sing, sing cadence. And then whenever you run or PT, uh, it was two cadence as well. So like left, left, lefty, right, leo. Low, right, leo. Lefty, right, leo. And then like everybody's repeating it at the same time. So like I said, I really like that part. Uh, by the way, I don't like running. If you asked me to go out and run today, I'd be like, mm -mm, no, I'm not going to go run. I would rather have a chili dog and chill out. Watch, watch some YouTube. That's what I would do. So, I don't know if uh, you can tell what I'm doing here, but this is a, a heart. So, it's a, it's a pixel heart. Pixel heart art. <laughs> but, uh, is that all the. Yeah, that's all the brown I need. So, we can take that back. Now, I'm ready for some white. Birch. Whoa, that's a little one. Come here. I need a. That's a good one. There we go. Whoops. Um, once I got to my MOS school. Oh, by the way, I, I was a. I found out that they had closed. Th this was during boot camp. Um, when we got up to camp. Uh, what was it? MCT, Marine Corps Combat Training. Uh, they actually told us what our actual MOS's were going to be. Uh, turns out I was not going to be a uh, 58, or I, I was not going to be in programming. I ended up going and becoming a 5831 Naval uh, Marine, wait, was it Naval Correctional Specialist? And you're like, wait, Naval? Yeah, it's because it's uh, it's trained by the Navy. Hold on, I don't have to do all pixels. I could simplify this. Give me a post here. I just gotta uh, turn and rotate. There we go. There's that. Oh, oh, come on, come on. And it's the one above it as well. So. Is that in line? is perfect um, hold on should I go ahead and keep going no nope I'll come I'll come back to that one so let's go chop it chop um, so after my 10 days of leave um, I came back for Marine Corps combat training which was harsh that's where they teach you how to shoot the m16 the um, what is it? The I want to say it's an M9. The M9s are the it's the mock mock. It's basically it's a grenade attachment that goes on the bottom of the M16, and it shoots uh, grenades. So I got to play with a grenade launcher, and then I got to play with the saw, which is an automatic machine gun. Um, I don't remember what the abbreviation stands for. And I got to play with the 50 caliber machine gun. That thing was no joke. Um, one of the things that I do remember is uh, when they had all the 50 cals set up and lined up on the range, I remember seeing the sand out in front of them, and uh, the sand was rippled in waves from the shock blast coming out of the, uh, the M16s. So, very cool. Anyhow, after that, uh, let's see, I did go to my MOS school where they told me I was a 5831 military police correctional specialist and I had to go to Lackland Air Force Base, Texas. So, I'm a Marine learning a naval job on an Air Force Base. Okay. Uh, whenever they had first told me uh, I wasn't getting the programming filled, they told me I was going to be a 5800, which is military police. Okay, cool. I could, I could go be a cop. That's cool. I could uh, 
I can do that, I guess. Well, it turns out it wasn't just being a cop. It was um, 5831, military police correctional specialist. Now, I didn't know it at the time, but I had just found one of the best kept secrets of the Marine Corps. Because being a 5831 is awesome. Uh, that only lasted a month, I think. But we had to make sure that we take our test. And anybody under the age of, um, let's see, 19 could not be in that MOS. So there were certain people that couldn't go. Um, which, I don't know. That's, that's okay, I guess. After... Um, like before we graduated and after, oh gosh, after training, they asked us, um, to write down where we'd like to go. Our brilliant ideas of like, I, idea stations, where would you want to end up being stationed at? Now this is a ruse because the Marine Corps is going to put you where they need you, not where you want to go. Um... I had chosen, uh, where is it, Fort Leonard Wood, which is here in Missouri, uh, my home state. And when asked all three choices, I put Fort Leonard Wood. I wanted to be here. Oh, oh, darn it, darn it, darn it. That's the wrong one. I don't need that. I need a post back. Where's the post? Anyhow, so I wrote down Fort Leonard Wood in Missouri, and they gave me Okinawa, Japan. <laughs> opposite side of the world so here I am in the Marine Corps uh, halfway through or uh, uh, like going through my training I've been promised hey you're gonna be uh, going through with your buddy in the in the, the program uh, come to find out that he actually didn't go all the way through Marine Corps boot camp um, yeah I won't get into the details, but basically, I went through boot camp by myself. Yeah. And that's all I gotta say about that. So, we got to um, Okinawa, Japan after the training and everything. And uh, when you first arrive to the island, you have to sign all these training things. And it's more training about the island itself and about the culture and. Uh, you have to learn about the, the snake, which is called the habu. The habu snake is the most aggressive snake on the island, and it's the most poisonous and deadly. Anyhow, you also learn about like banana spiders and jungle rules, stuff like that. Anywho, uh, that's, that's when I got to meet a new culture and be in a place that was completely completely out of my comfort zone, I'd say. And I loved it. I loved it so much that I ended up staying for two years. Um, the job itself, being a correctional officer, that was that was not hard. What in the world? Hi. Code, is that you? Hi. <laughs> I guess somebody found the link. I didn't I didn't reset the link from the, the live stream. <laughs> Oh gosh. Oh well. Koja08, how are you? Can I do a screenshot? Sure. I'm just I'm just sitting here telling boring military stories. <laughs> uh, shall we face that direction? Jeez. Jeez. How long have I been? I've been recording for 24 minutes. Oh my gosh. I've been talking about the Marine Corps the entire time. Anyhow. Um... A lot of people ask me what happened during 9-11. Um, I was over in Okinawa, Japan. I was up on Camp Hansen, which is the north side of the island. Um, all right, hold on. Hope you don't find I'm talking to the camera. Uh, happy vet trans Veterans Day? But that's not right. Hold on. I got to... I don't want to insult it by spelling it wrong. Veterans. There we go. Veterans. Oh, Veterans Day. Happy Veterans. Oh, 
<laughs> Happy Veterans Day. There we go. Yes. Oh, I still got shift lock on as well from the other day. So, um, let's see. What else was I going to say? Um, spent two years over in Okinawa, Japan. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, uh, the, the 9-11. So, I was 19. I was over in Okinawa. And I was actually upstairs. Because um, the time that it happened over here is not the time that it happened over there. Because it's different time zones. Uh, which is also why I'm so crucial about time zones now, because of the whole Okinawa thing. Anyhow, uh, the first news story, I was actually sitting in the commons area, and I was buffing out my boots. Um, I know it was it was late at night, and I had, I had uh, work the next day. I had to go to the jail the next day. The brig. So, while... While I was sitting there buffing up my boots, I saw what was happening, and I think the majority of the, the barracks was asleep. So I went and I, I got the duty officer, or the duty corporal, because there's always somebody that was on fire watch. Just tradition, I guess. Um, plus, it keeps Marines in line. Anyhow. Oh gosh. Stop, stop, stop. Stay, stay up there. Blink. Ah. Uh. Here, I'm gonna put that one back. Um, I actually I watched the second plane uh, go through the the towers. Uh, I did not see the first one, but they ended up showing more footage and going over it quite a few times after that. So the second one I saw alive. Um, I ended up calling my mom, very confused about what was happening and just talking to her. The next day, our um, chief petty officer, I think. No. It's a CO1. It's a, it's a silver, it's either a silver bar with the red in the middle. It's a commissioned officer. Um, she brought us all together and lined us up and basically made the announcement of what had happened and where we were going from there. And she reminded us that Okinawa, Japan is like the spearhead for the Marine Corps. We were the first that were going to go in. Everything else. Um, what am I doing? I need a tiny floor. Tiny, fl tiny floor. <clears throat> um, needless to say, there's not n much need for um, rig guards during times of war, except for like POW camps. And even the POW camps are usually ran by uh, infantry, not by us. The 5831 Military Police Correctional Specialist is to guard the brig. And we basically made sure that everybody was kept who was U.S. military. So, anyhow. Um, there... Came a time when uh, I was doing the rifle range, and I scored so high on the rifle range, it was like two points, and that was from the 300 rapid fire, 300 yard line rapid fire. I'd only dropped two points, and still those were just outside the center ring, so I still got the one point, but not the two point bonus thing. So, um, because of my expert riflemanship, I guess. They said, hey, we're going to go send you to, um, it's called foreign, getting fapped out, going to a different MOS. So I got to go be an 8531, uh, what is it, 8531 um, primary marksman instructor, a PMI. And that's when I got to take over classes and actually start teaching Marines how to shoot the M16A2 service rifle. They also, shot, uh, they also taught us how to teach about the pistol, but that was usually reserved for um, officers. So we didn't didn't really do too much of that. Uh, oh, sorry, I gotta look at the pixel art again. Come back over here to the flag. All right, the first line is gonna be solid blue, so 
I should be able to use post for those. This is fine. That's that's good. Just like that. And then a single piece. Go five. Floor tiny. Good. And this is going to be blue. It's gonna be blue wood. Anyhow. <clears throat> um while I was uh, a uh, marksman instructor, I taught a lot of people how to use bone support and um, different techniques that I would use when shooting the M16 to um, get them better, higher scores on the rifle range. And it was it was a lot. It was anywhere from 26 to like 39, 40 people at a time. And it was every two weeks we would go through. Um, basically field training at first and then we would do um, the actual rifle range the next next week um, we are at the 30 minute mark so if you're watching this during breakfast or during lunch or during some time that you can't have more than 30 minutes pause it come back later I'll be here like don't forget to like comment subscribe do all those cool things but I'm, I'm gonna keep going until this is finished and, and I'm out of stories. <laughs> Trust me, there's a lot of stories that I have from the Marine Corps that you don't share at like Thanksgiving dinner. There's, <laughs> that's, <ew. laughs> wow, he went for that story this time. Okay, um, anyhow, <laughs> so the stories that I do have, um, I'm keeping them very mellow, uh, family friendly, I guess. So, thank you for listening. If you if you've watched up to this point, do hashtag something. Hashtag eight bit, and I'll know what that means. There we go. If I if I see hashtag eight bit inside the comments, I'll know that you've watched it up to this point. <sighs> We're going with the floor, tiny floor. We're gonna do one here, and then one over here like that. Okay. I may have to put a stepping stool. Uh-oh, that one's too small. I might have to put a little stepping stool so I can reach up there. Come on. Ooh, good. There we go. The next one's going to be white. Uh, I don't have any birch over here, so I'm just going to skip it for now. Let's go back over to the post. Um, this is very hard to see, so I'm going to set my settings down. That way it turns off the glow. Come one over. There we go. And same right here. One over. And then I need a tiny floor. Nope, not a post. Stop, stop it, stop. B. Five. Anyhow, uh, after Okinawa, Japan. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. So just before leaving, um, they actually did this thing, what's called stop loss. And stop loss means that any deployment you're on, any retirement, any transition, it gets stopped. It prevents people from getting out of the Marine Corps. It prevents people from getting out of the military. And it was a big to do. Your contract basically gets extended. Um, most people nowadays go in on a four-year contract or a three-year contract with three years active, three years reserve, uh, four years active, four years um, inactive reserve, and such. So it was it was a big thing. And let's see, um, they started it on the 29th. And my plane left on like the 28th. I think those are the days. I can't remember the exact days. If you go watch my uh, my Draw My Life, it's got that in there. Needless to say, I was able to get out of Okinawa before stop loss happened. And I left and came back to California. Camp Pendleton, California. One, two, three, four. Yep, so this is exactly one post. Missed one post, and then yep, yeah, that's not going to reach. So I'll go back to this one right here, and C 
single tiny floor. Curse you, tiny toilet! <laughs> Alright. And then it's three and three and one. So, on this side we're going to do... Oh, get in there, buddy. One, two, three. And then one on this side. And then just the reverse on this side. One, two, three. One on this side. And then... Hold on, is that, is that it? That's it. And then there's three at the top, and that's it. Said, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to get something to stand on over here. There we go. Ooh, can't see anything in the distance because it's it's all shifted. Code, are you recording? Yes, I am. <laughs> You'll see it tomorrow, buddy. <laughs> yes, I am recording. Uh, okay, so I got back to um, California, Camp Pendleton, California where I met uh, my new roommate, Lance Corporal Trow. And he had a red Trans Am. And he was a skater, alternative, uh, like, like aggressive inline skates, not skateboard. So, and that was, that was big during the time frame that I was in. So while we were on our off days, we would go to the beach, we would skate, we would hang out and have fun. And the job schedule was awesome. We had what was called a 72 schedule. We would work um, for 24 hours. Whoa, I can't see anything. Oh gosh. All right, turn the graphics back up so I got some shadows here. There we go, I couldn't see anything. So uh, that means that you work for three days, you're off for a day, you work for three days, and then you had to back the back-to-back -back, um, 24s. Work a day, off a day, work a day. And then you were you would you work a day, off two days, work two days, off two days, and then you switched out and you got the 72. So you were off for three days, work a day, off for three days. So if you wanted to, you could take one day of leave and be gone for an entire week. It was sweet. I mean, we all scheduled our holidays and everything around that 72 schedule. And it was fun. It was lots of fun. Anywho, um, oh, you guys might remember um, Lance Corporal Trowell whenever I talk about it inside the Draw My Life because the Red Trans Am, and that's, uh, that's who I was going to go get my hair cut with when I met Liz. Um, needless to say, I wanted to say thank you to all the all the Marines, military personnel, all the families of military. Um, if you have a parent who is in the military, give them a huge, huge thank you. Because when you go into the military, you you don't really come back home. I mean, they say that you come back home, everything's changed. Everything. Um, the other thing is the the time I was in the Marine Corps was four years. I had four years active uh, active military, and then I had uh, four years inactive readiness reserve (IRR), which basically means I sit here and breathe air while the world re revolves. Um, but, yeah. When I got back, everything had changed. Nothing was the same. And it, was only, it had only been four years. So, everything that I do now, I basically compare its time length to that time that I was in the Marine Corps. Um, 
and nothing feels quite as, as long as that did. Uh, my kids are 8 and 12. I'm oh, sorry, 8 and 11. They'll be 9 and 12 here in, soon. And that time is, is a blink. It's a blink of an eye in comparison to the Marine Corps time. It feels like I was in the Marine Corps forever. Uh, I was a correctional officer for nine years total. Because after I got out of the military, my job was a correctional officer. So that's what I went and did uh, at the, the local jail. And the mentality in there is, I mean, basically the same. You got everybody who's serving their duties, you're serving their purpose, and you've got a camaraderie that you just, you can't explain. I mean, you can try and explain it to people, but unless you were in it, you don't really know what it's, what it's like. Um, even to this day, anybody who's a Marine, right, I find out about it, I would still do something above and beyond for them than I would normal people that I meet. That's not to say I wouldn't still do it for them, but if I found out somebody was a Marine and they were um, in need of something, or they asked me of something, like, that is my brother, or that is my sister, and that's that. I hold them like family. Thank you, everyone, for watching <laughs> watching this episode of Lumber Tycoon 2 with me, Heath Haskins, Code Primate. I know I went over by about 11 minutes. That's okay. Um, like I said, huge shout out to um, Pork Beans for creating the 8-bit uh, pixel art flag. Uh, I'm going to use it to celebrate Veterans Day and show my patriotism. So, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe down below. Do all those cool things I'm supposed to call out at the end. Love you guys very much. Happy Veterans Day. Happy Veterans Day weekend. And we'll talk to you very soon. Outro. Thank you.